Section four of Humor of the North. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Humor of the North, arranged by Lawrence J. Burpee. Section four. The Japanese Reporter by Mrs. Everard Coates. We do not know to this day to what circumstance we owed the honor of appearing in print in Japan, whether we were mistaken for individuals of distinction, or whether we were considered remarkable on our own merits on account of being by ourselves. But we went downstairs fully believing it to be a custom of the country, a rather flattering custom, to which we were much pleased to conform. And this is a true chronicle of what happened. It was a slender, round-faced youth who made his deprecating bow to us in the drawing-room. His shoulders sloped, his grey-blue kimono lay in narrow folds across his chest, like what the old-fashioned people at home used to call a sontag. American boots were visible under the skirt of the garment, and an American stiff felt hat reposed on the sofa beside him. His thick, short black hair stood crisply on end, and out of his dark eyes slanted a look of modest inquiry. He was the most unaggressive reporter I have ever seen. His boots and his hat were the only things about him that I could connect with journalism, as I had previously been acquainted with it. "'How do you do?' I said, seeing that the silence must be broken, and the preliminaries gone through with by somebody. "'Yes,' he responded, with an amiability that induced Othodosia to get up hurriedly and look out of the window. Did the ladies arrive to the Duke of Westminster? Looking from one to the other of us. We believe they did, gasped Orthodosia, and immediately looked out of the window again. I edged my chair toward the other window. Then the cloven foot appeared in the shape of a notebook. He produced it with gentle ostentation, as one would a trump card. The simile is complete when I add that he took it from his sleeve. How old is Rady? Calmly, deliberately. I, I forget, falsified this historian. Forty-five, I believe. The reporter put it down. Other Rady, your friend, not so old, older, more old? I am twenty-two years of age, said Orthodosia gravely, with a reproachful glance at me. And I weigh ten stone height five feet eight inches in shoes i am in the habit of wearing fives in gloves six and a half the reporter scribbled convulsively radies will study japanese porytics please say i beg pardon yes fills another page orthodosia suavely are they produced here to any extent we have here many porytics Riberer, conservative, monarchist. Oh, more recourse to the window. Orthodosia, I said severely, you may not be aware of it, but your conduct is throwing discredit upon a person hitherto fairly entitled to the world's good opinion, which is me. Continue to be absorbingly interested in that brick wall, and allow me to talk to the gentleman. We have come, I said distinctly, Orthodosia bears testimony to the fact that I said it distinctly, to see Japan as far as Japan will permit. Her politics, system of education, customs, and arts will be of, ahem, interest to us. We cannot truthfully say that we expect to penetrate more deeply into the national life than other travelers have done. In repressing this expectation, we claim to be original." We confess that our impressions will naturally be superficial, but we hope to represent the crust so charmingly that nobody will ask for any of the interior of the, well, of the pie. That's equivocal, said Orthodosia, and ridiculous. Notwithstanding the well-known reticence of the Japanese, I continued, we hope to meet some of them who will show us something more of their domesticity than we can see through the windows. You will acquire language of Japan? Not all of it, I think. It seems a little difficult, but musical. Much more musical than our ugly English, interposed Orthodosia. Yes. Will you the story of your journey, please say? Certainly. We came from Montreal to Vancouver by the CPR. 
that is the best western railroad on the continent because it is built with english capital bombastically some people say that you never would have heard of canada in japan but for the cpr but i am told that they are mostly jealous republican americans the reporter bowed we travelled three thousand nine hundred miles by this route across the northwest and through the rocky mountains here Othodosia dwelt upon the remarkable snowsheds for protection against avalanches. She went on with vague confidence to speak of the opening up of trade between Canada and Japan by the new railway and steamship line, and I added a few remarks about the interest in Japanese art that existed in Montreal, and the advisability of the Japanese establishing firms of their own there, while the reporter flattered our eloquence by taking down notes enough to fill a quarto volume. We had never been interviewed before, we might never be again, and we were determined to make the occasion an illustrious one. We were quite pleased with ourselves as the nice little creature bowed himself out, promising to send us the fortunate Shimbun, which would publish the interview, with a translation of the same, a day or two later. I suppose it was Orthodoxia's effect upon him, the effect I had begun to find usual, but he didn't send the Shimbun. He brought it next morning with much apology and many bows. I have before me a penciled document in the handwriting of three persons. The document contains the interview as it was set down in the language of the translator, who sat with an expression of unruffled repose, and spake aloud from the shimbun which he held in his hand. Sometimes Orthodoxia took it down, sometimes he took it down himself, sometimes I took it down while Orthodoxia left the room. The reason for this will perhaps be self-evident. Orthodoxia and I possess the document in turns to ward off low spirits. I have only to look at it to bring on an attack of the wildest hilarity. The reporter came entirely in Japanese costume the second time, and left his wooden sandals outside on the stairs. He left most of his English there, too, apparently, but he bowed all the way from the door to the middle of the apartment, in a manner that stood for a great deal of polite conversation. Then he sat down, and we sat down, and Orthodoxia prepared to transcribe the interview which had introduced us to the Japanese nation from his lips. It was a proud, happy moment. The reporter took the journal with which he was connected out of one of the long, graceful, flowing sleeves which make life worth living for masculine Japan. He told us that it was the Hochi Hochi Shimbun, and he carefully pointed out the title, date, beginning and end of the article, which we marked, intending to buy several copies of the paper and send them home. We were anxious that the people there should be kept fully enlightened as to our movements, and there seemed to be a great deal of detail in the article. Its appearance was a little sensational, Orthodoxia thought, but she silently concluded, with her usual charity, not to blame the reporter for that, since he couldn't possibly be considered responsible for the exaggerations of the Chinese alphabet. Yesterday, translated the reporter solemnly, I must copy the document which does not give his indescribable pronunciation, by Canada steamer Radies arrived. The correspondent, who is me, went to Grand Hotel, which the Radies is. Radies is of Canada, and in the time before of England. They have a beautiful countenance. Here the reporter bowed, and Orthodoxia left the room for the first time. I think she said she must go and get her pencil sharpened. She left it with me, however, and I took up the thread of the interview. Object of Rady's Rocomotion to make beautiful their minds. Miss Elder Rady answered, Our object is to observe habits, makings, and beings of the Japanese nation, and to examine how civilization of England and America prevails among the nation and other objects is to examine the art and drawing and education from the exterior of the confectionery. In order to observe customs of Japan, we intend to run a private house. We were getting on swimmingly when Orthodoxia reappeared, having recovered in the interval, and told the reporter that he must think foreigners very abrupt and rude, and that he really spoke English extremely well to both of which remarks he responded, with a polite suavity that induced me to turn my back upon her in an agony of suppressed feeling, yes. 
Miss Younger Rady, measuring ten stone and wearing six shoes and a half, continue, The railroad between the Montreal and Canada is passing. I beg pardon, said the unhappy Orthodoxia, with an awful galvanism about the corners of her mouth. I didn't quite catch what you said, I mean what I said. The reporter translated it over again. Perhaps, I said nervously, it's a misprint. No, the reporter replied gravely, Miss Younger Rady. Gracious, said Orthodoxia. And if by the railroad we employ the steamer, the commerce of Montreal and Japan will prevail. Correspondent asked to Miss Younger Rady, May I heard the story of your caravansary? Orthodoxia again retired. It was a little trying for me, but when he continued, she answered, From Montreal to Canada the distance is three thousand miles. I was glad she had gone. I am afraid I choked a little at this point, for just here he decided to wrestle with the pencil himself. When he handed the paper back again I read, While we are passing the distance between Mount Rocky, I had a great danger, for the snow over the mountain is falling down, and the railroad shall be cut off. Therefore, by the snowshade, which is made by the tree, its falling was defend. Speaking finish. The ladies is to took their caravansary attending among a few days. Ladies has the liability of many news. That last item, said Orthodoxia, who had come in with the excuse of some tea, is frightfully correct. Having dispatched the business of the hour and a half, the reporter began to enjoy himself, while Orthodoxia and I tried to seat ourselves where we couldn't see each other's faces in the mirror over the mantelpiece. He drank his tea with his head on a level with the table, and if suction can express approval, it was expressed. He said that there were fourteen editorial writers on his shimbun, and that its circulation was one million, which shows that for the soul of a newspaper man Shintoism has no obvious advantages. He dwelt upon the weather for quarters of an hour at a time. The Japanese are such a leisurely people. He took more tea, by this time stone cold. He said he would bring a Japanese gentleman and lady to see us, and in response to our inquiry as to whether the lady was the wife or the sister of the gentleman, he said with gravity, I do not know the lady's wife. He asked us for our photographs, and when Orthodoxia retired at this for the fifth time, he thought she had gone to get them, and stayed until I was compelled to go and pray her to return. It was the ringing of the two o'clock lunch bell that suggested to him that the day was waning, and that perhaps he had better wane too. End of section four.